Hi. Hi. Are you a uh, friend of Rachel's? Yes, yes I am. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 friends love interests. Could you imagine? I go away for a few days, I come back, and my boyfriend is living with some woman he got pregnant. <laughs> I got you the present to make up for being such a jerk to you. So if you're willing, I'm, uh, I'm all yours. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable love interests outside the main circle of protagonists on this beloved TV sitcom. Which friend's love interest did you fall in love with? Tell us in the comments. Number 20, Barry Farber. Before the series began, Rachel was engaged to marry Barry Farber, an orthodontist. And that's when it hit me, how much Barry looks like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> However, on the wedding day, Rachel decides to leave Barry at the altar. I guess, uh, I guess this belongs to you. And thank you for giving it to me. Well, thank you for giving it back. Nonetheless, Barry is seen several times throughout the show, even briefly rekindling a romance with Rachel. Hey, Dr. Farber. All right, Miss Green, everything looks fine. <laughs> yep, I think we're starting to see some real progress here. But the fact that Barry proved unfaithful to Rachel, as well as her best friend Mindy, whom he ended up marrying for real, has us feeling that Rachel dodged a bullet by not marrying him. And once again, she is out of here. Okay, who had 945? Barry may be a schlub, but he does have some importance to the show's story. Since Rachel leaving him effectively kickstarts her journey and the show overall. Also, this list. Number 19, Janine Lacroix. Hey everybody, uh, I'd like you to meet Janine. She's, she's gonna be my new roommate. After Chandler moves out, Joey gets a new roommate, Janine, played by Australian supermodel Elle McPherson. A gorgeous dancer, Janine isn't initially attracted to Joey. And his friends even advise him to try not to get involved with her since they live together. However, Janine is eventually won over by Joey's charm. Happy New Year. The two of them get along well together, and she even helps him get in touch with his feminine side. Well, that's like summer in a bowl. Still, their relationship is doomed after a double date with Monica and Chandler brings to light that Janine doesn't like them. Are you saying we can't hang out with them? Because that'd be kind of a problem. No, of course we can still hang out with them. Just. You know, not two nights in a row. And anybody who doesn't like Mondler isn't worth dating in our books either. Number 18, Paolo. Hi. Wanna see her? We've got to agree with Ross on this one. Paolo is a total crap weasel. Do you know the word crap weasel? <laughs> no. That's funny, because you are a huge crap weasel. <laughs> he comes into the picture at the worst possible time, just as Ross is finally plucking up the courage to make a move on Rachel. Um, well, for a while now, I've been wanting to, um... Yes, yes, that's, that's right. <laughs> but as soon as they meet, Paolo manages to steal Rachel's heart even though they don't speak the same language. Ragazzi, sono appena arrivato vivo al piano di sotto, quindi ci vedremo molto spesso, <laughs> He doesn't speak much English. <laughs> Monopoly. Their relationship isn't exactly deep and meaningful, but she's clearly infatuated with him. Hi, sorry, sorry we late. We uh, kind of just, you know, lost track of time. Ross unabashedly hates Paolo, and it seems like he's just jealous. But after Paolo gets a little handsy with Phoebe, the rest of the gang realizes that this guy has got to go. Paolo, I, I just want to tell you, and I, I think I'd speak for everyone when I say... <laughs> Number 17, Mona. Mona, well, what a, what a beautiful name. You think so? I always kind of hated it. A co-worker of Monica's, Mona meets Ross at his sister's wedding. The two of them have some decent chemistry together. Heck, she even deduces his odd Halloween costume when none of his friends get it. Oh my god, you're Sputnik! Yeah! Unfortunately, their relationship is plagued with commitment issues and unfortunate circumstances on Ross's part. But the biggest obstacle in their relationship is the fact that Ross had gotten Rachel pregnant shortly before they got together. First you get my Rachel pregnant? You got Rachel pregnant? Who did? You did! Yes. Although Ross had an understandable focus on his imminent child, his devotion to Rachel over Mona meant that Mona felt she was being put on the back burner. I love spending time with you. You know, I just, I hope we're moving forward. I mean, we should probably talk about that, don't you think? Maybe if they'd met sooner, they could have made things work. 
Number 16, Gavin Mitchell. Well, who, who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? I'm the hell person whose office this is. When Rachel returns to work after her pregnancy, she encounters Gavin, who has been assigned to her job while she was on leave. Initially, Gavin's sarcastic, confrontational attitude makes her dislike him. But some acts of kindness gradually win Rachel over. Eventually, the two of them share a kiss at a party. Right when I'm about to change my opinion of you, you go and you... And you do that. However, like our last entry, Rachel's complicated relationship with Ross serves to cut her budding romance with Gavin short after only a few episodes. I don't want to get in the middle of anything. Oh, you're not, you're not, you're not getting in the middle of anything. Don't worry about Ross, really, really. Oh, the hide, that's Ross! It's a shame, really, since his back and forth with Rachel is pretty entertaining. Number 15, Joshua Bergen. Hi. Hi, I'm Joshua. Hi, I'm Rachel Green. What can I do for you, Joshua? While working at Bloomingdale's, Rachel meets Joshua, a recently divorced client she helps find a wardrobe for and develops a crush on. Personally, we think she may have been interested in him simply because she has so much fun saying his name. And he's got the most beautiful name! I never realized! Joshua! Oh, Josh! Ua! Joshua! Rachel goes through several elaborate, and often embarrassing, attempts to ask him out and or seduce him. Behind you? Unfortunately, she ends up coming on a little too strongly, particularly when she asks him to marry her, which he isn't ready for again. What if we got married? <laughs> what? The whole wearing a wedding dress thing sends him packing for good. I do! I gotta go. <laughs> Number 14, Paul Stevens. This is my father, Paul Stevens. There are a lot of amazing guest stars on this show, but Bruce Willis playing the intimidating yet vulnerable Paul Stevens has got to be one of our favorites. Why can't you get a girlfriend your own age? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, it's not funny. When Ross started dating one of his students, he knew he was going to encounter some problems. Professor Geller. Yes, Professor Friesen <laughs> I'll be with you in one moment. So, I will take one box of the Thin Mints. But we're not sure he was anticipating Elizabeth having an extremely protective and extremely imposing father for him to contend with. Ross really is a great guy. Well, maybe you could date him then. That would save me the trouble of killing him. Much to Ross's annoyance, Rachel develops an interest in Paul, and the two end up dating. Joey? Hi, Ross. <laughs> was just getting him to like you. Hands down, the most hilarious moment in this season six story arc is Ross accidentally witnessing Paul psyching himself up when the older man thinks he's alone in a room. Just a love machine. <laughs> I'm just a love machine. <laughs> Don't look at it, but you have Number 13, Fun Bobby. Hey, sorry I'm late, but my, uh, my grandfather died about two hours ago. But I, 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 I couldn't get a flight out till tomorrow, so here I am. Bobby dates Monica off and on for a few years. However, contrary to his name, Bobby ends up being less than fun. In his first appearance, he fails to liven up a New Year's party due to finding out his grandfather had just died. It's going to be an open casket, you know, so <laughs> at least I'll, I'll get to see him again. Then, Monica discovers Bobby has a drinking problem and convinces him to get sober. However, this has the side effect of making him, as Chandler puts it, ridiculously dull, Bobby. If you, if you want to drink, it's okay with me. I've got to get used to it. No, no, really, that, I, I wouldn't feel right about it. <laughs> Just some water. So the light went out in my refrigerator. Like a scotch on the rocks with a twist. Her attempts to get drunk to have more fun when he's around only serve to drive Bobby away, bringing their fun to an end. I hope we can be friends. Okay. Right, take care. Okay, me too. Number 12, Bonnie. Phoebe, look at Ross and that girl. Big no, no, look at that! It's a line of ants! 
They're working as a team! A friend of Phoebe's, Bonnie used to be bald, which is part of why Rachel is initially okay with Phoebe setting her up with Ross. However, Bonnie has a full head of hair when they begin their relationship, and she and Ross seem to be getting along well. Cue a very jealous Rachel throwing a wrench into things. During a trip to a beach house that Bonnie is late for, Rachel flirts heavily with Ross and advises Bonnie to shave her head again. Because I think about shaving it all off again sometimes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you definitely should do that. This, combined with Rachel's confession to Ross, leads to Ross breaking up with Bonnie. Considering Ross and Rachel break up again almost immediately, maybe Ross should have stayed with Bonnie. Bald is beautiful, and so is she, after all. Rachel was just helping me out. My head got all sunburned. Oh. Number 11, Kathy. Oh, she's pretty. Pretty, uh, pretty girl. The pretty, she's pretty. Oh, Kathy, we liked you so much when you were first introduced. You were funny, smart, and able to keep up with Chandler's banter. Uh, Chandler, my name's Chandler. Did I say that? No, you didn't. Hi, I'm Kathy. Uh, Kathy, with a K or a C? With a K. <laughs> hey. But any girl who cheats on both Joey and Chandler cannot stay in our good books for long. How can you not trust me? Well, you can understand, given how we started. Oh, wow. I can't believe you're throwing that in my face. When Joey starts dating a new girl, it's the chemistry between her and Chandler, not Joey, that seems obvious. Thank you for the book. Uh, the book? The Velveteen Rabbit. Kind of have the feeling you had something to do with it. After a few episodes of Chandler agonizing about what to do about his feelings for Kathy, the two end up kissing. I forgot my purse. Oh. There's nothing worse than seeing Joey and Chandler fight, and since this one was clearly Chandler's fault, we totally agreed with the punishment Joey gave him. The meaning of the box is threefold. One, it gives me the time to think about what I did. Two, it proves how much I care about my friendship with Joey. And three, it hurts. Number 10, Carol Willick. Here, take my car, go pick up your friends. No, I'm not going to pick them up. Listen, we both know you're going to do it because you're not a jerk, okay? So you can either sulk here for half an hour and then go pick them up, or you can save us both time and sulk in the car. Ross's ex-wife, his first one anyway, Carol comes out as a lesbian before the beginning of the show, having cheated on Ross with her partner, Susan. You slept with another woman. Oh, you're, you're one to talk. While their romantic relationship may be over, she and Ross retain a close relationship, in large part due to her having their son Ben during the first season and splitting time raising him with Ross. We, we still need a name for this little guy. How about Ben? <laughs> I like Ben. Still, leaving Ben aside, it's clear that even if she isn't in love with Ross, they have a special connection and a long history together, as Carol is able to read him like few others can. I'll find someone I know you will. The right woman is just waiting for you. Also, her relationship with Susan is lovely to see develop. We're gathered here today to join Carol and Susan in holy matrimony. Number 9, Pete Becker that our relationship is, uh, is hitting a new level now. We were so rooting for this relationship. So I'll see you soon. Okay, I love you. I love you. Love, love, you. love, you. love, you. love you. Until Pete turned out to be a little nuts. Okay, um, you're alone. Monica had had so many crappy boyfriends at this point that the idea of her ending up with a super nice guy, who just so happened to be a millionaire, was pretty appealing. You're an A, you're not paying for the pizza. Oh, come on, it's only fair. We paid for the flight. When Monica thought he was going to propose, we admittedly had our hopes up too. Monica's gonna marry a millionaire! Only to be brought down to earth when Pete told her that he wanted to conquer the physical world. It's time for me to conquer the physical world. <laughs> okay. Monica, I want to become the ultimate fighting champion. When season three aired in 1996 to 97, UFC wasn't the widely popular sport it is today, so it sounded pretty crazy when Pete described it. Well, believe me, I don't want to get hurt either. I'm being smart about this. See these guys? They're the best trainers in the world. Sad as we were, we get why this relationship had to end. I care about you too much to watch you hurt yourself like this. So if you have to do this, then you're gonna have to do it without me. 
Number 8. Charlie Wheeler Hi, I'm Professor Wheeler. When Charlie first appeared on the show, she and Ross had a great first day together. Oh my god, she's she's great. I mean, we, we have so much in common and she's just cool, you know, and funny. Oh man, I don't know if you've noticed, but she's a hottie. <laughs> Hi! But because Ross didn't move quickly enough, Joey swooped in and formed an unlikely relationship with this hyper-intelligent and beautiful paleontologist. The Met, singular. Which one? They all suck. <laughs> the museum. I don't think so. It's pretty clear that the whole time they're dating that they aren't exactly the best match, or acrimonious, so we weren't surprised when things finally started to heat up between Charlie and Ross. Sounds like a good idea, Dr. Geller. Stop it. PhD. You're filthy. If we weren't so busy waiting for Ross and Rachel to figure things out, we would have been pretty happy for these two to end up together. I, I love you. I love you too. <sighs> okay, that's it. We are seeing other people. Number seven, Tag Jones. Hello? Well, Rachel hires Tag as her assistant for some pretty obvious reasons. The man is gorgeous. Still, while he may not be qualified for his job, he does hit it off with Rachel after a while. So please don't fire me for doing this. The two of them have great chemistry, both romantic and comedic. Plus, he's like an adorable puppy most of the time and gets along great with her friends too. Sadly, Rachel's 30th birthday makes her realize that she wants a relationship with someone more mature than Tag. I just think I'm past the point where I can, you know, just have fun. Rachel, don't do this. Also, a misunderstanding about the father of her baby makes it clear he isn't ready for kids. I'm having a baby. Oh. <laughs> you can go. Thank you. Still, Tag is a lot of fun while he lasts. Number six, Emily Waltham. I've been strip searched at John F. Kennedy Airport. Apparently to you people, I look like someone who's got a balloon full of cocaine stuffed up their butt. Poor Emily. She was actually pretty cool and clearly made Ross really happy when they started their whirlwind romance. I'm telling you, once I got her into a dry pair of shoes, she was a totally different person. Ross, come quickly, there's a deer just outside eating fruit from the orchard. But everything, understandably, went straight downhill when Ross made that tiny little error at the altar. Hey, Ross, take the Emily, take the Rachel. In typical Ross fashion, their relationship moved very quickly, with Ross proposing after only six weeks. Why don't we? Why don't we what? <laughs> Get married. You are mad. No, no. After the incident at their wedding, however, Emily stopped being so likable when she forbade Ross from seeing Rachel anymore. I'll come to New York and we'll try to make this work. Oh, that is so great. That's, that's... As long as you don't see Rachel anymore. Yes, we get it. Emily comes out looking like the bad guy here. But who wouldn't do the same thing if your fiancé said someone else's name during your I do's? Well, you have to understand how humiliating it was for me up on that altar in front of my entire family, all my friends. I know, I am, I am so sorry. Number five, Julie. This is Julie. Uh, Julie, this is Rachel. Just when we thought Ross and Rachel might get together because Rachel finally seemed to reciprocate Ross's feelings, Julie stepped into the picture. Julie! <laughs> Julie, isn't that great? I mean, isn't that just kick you in the crotch, spit on your neck, fantastic? As with pretty much all of the women Ross dates, Julie would have seemed like a perfect match for him, if it wasn't for Rachel. Well, you didn't hang up either. <laughs> Okay, no, no, you hang up, you, you, you. As a fellow paleontologist, she's a good fit for Ross and she quickly fits in with the rest of the gang. You know, in some cultures, having a third nipple is actually a sign of virility. You get the best huts and women dance naked around you. She also tolerates a whole lot of crappy treatment from Rachel. Okay, Julie, so now let's start with your childhood. What was that like? <laughs> well, in a nutshell. Uh, uh, 
Rachel does everything she can to sabotage this relationship. I was doing great with Julie before I found out about you. Hey, I was doing great before I found out about you. You think it's easy for me to see you with Julie? Well, then you should have said something before I met her. And ultimately succeeds after telling Ross how she feels about him. Number 4. David I was just saying to my friend that I thought you were the most beautiful woman that I'd ever seen in, in my life. Um. Passionate, kind, and thoroughly adorkable, David the Scientist Guy is one of Phoebe's best love interests and one of her first. I have a question then. Yeah. Um, were you planning on kissing me ever? Although the two of them are great together, his work takes him abroad for years. Uh, roughly translated, that means um, th this thing that I'm looking at? Wow. His sporadic visits to the U.S. are always a highlight, and Phoebe even breaks a sacred pact with Joey to see him. Aren't you supposed to be in Russia? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just in town for a conference. Sadly, circumstances lead to David coming in second place to someone we'll be discussing soon. Oh my god, Mike! It's David, actually. We have a feeling that if David had been able to stay in the States more often, the choice wouldn't have been so clear-cut. What, what are you doing here? Well, I, I'm back from Minsk. Uh, uh, permanently. Number 3. Richard Burke It's James Bond. We loved Richard so much that we didn't even have time to be weirded out by the fact that he was 21 years older than Monica and a grandpa. I mean, hell, I'm a whole person who can drink older than you. Or that Monica kissed his son. Oh my god, it didn't remind you of oh, my- Oh, don't say it! <sighs> no, but it did, didn't it? Yes! Oh, man! Okay, maybe it was a little weird, but we really love these two together anyway. I just want to say that of all the guys that Monica has been with, and that is a lot. <laughs> I like you the best. Oh, thank you, Phoebe. That's very sweet. Richard is Monica's great love throughout the series, and for good reason. Because getting over you is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. And I never let myself think about you. He's handsome, sophisticated, and he actually seems to find Monica's eccentricities to be endearing. I like the way you have efficiently folded this tab under. See, in a tape emergency, you could shave valuable seconds off your time. Exactly! Oh, God, I love that I can be totally neurotic around you now. <laughs> also, can we talk about that mustache? I, I see you got your mustache back. Well, my nose got lonely. In the end, it's clear that Monica and Chandler make a way better couple. Apparently, I'm willing to offer her things that you are not. But I am willing to offer her all those things. But we still hold a spot in our hearts for Richard. Don't let her go. Trust me. You know, Richard, you are a good guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I hate that. Number two, Janice Littman Goralnik. Janice? Oh my. God. There were a lot of characters on this list that we were totally enamored with at one time or another. But admittedly, this pick isn't so much someone we love as someone we love to hate. I cut you out of all my pictures, so if you want, I have a bag with just your heads. Janice made her first appearance in season one when we see Chandler try, unsuccessfully, to break up with her. Hi, Janice. <laughs> <sighs> okay, here we go. I don't think we should go out anymore. And the gang doesn't quite manage to get rid of her until season 10. Oh. My. God! Sure. There were definitely moments where she seemed sweet. I brought you something. Is it loaded? <laughs> Oh, little candy hearts. Chan and Jan forever. But honestly, if we have to hear that laugh one more time, we're moving to Yemen. Sir, a ticket to Yemen is $2,100, and we don't take library cards. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Do you have to stay? American Express. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mike Hannigan All you have to do is pretend to be Mike. I am Mike. Atta boy. 
The Magic of Friends is based on the dynamic between the six main characters, and we don't think any significant other fit into the gang quite as well as Mike, otherwise known as Crap Bag. Mike Crap Bag? No, no Mike, no, just, just Crap Bag. Though their meeting was a total fluke. Mike! <laughs> yeah? Okay. Mike manages to bring the perfect combination of quirkiness and sweetness that Phoebe needs. I mean, if you can't even be civil to the woman I love... The then... woman you what? Yeah, the woman you what? <laughs> the woman I love. I love you. Whether he was playing air piano, taking money back from charities... So you're asking us to refund your donation to the children? Yeah. <laughs> this feels really good. Or helping to raise a family of rats. These are my rat babies! <laughs> yeah, we have rat babies now. Mike quickly stole our hearts. We admit it, we were really big David fans. Would you care for my seed as well? Actually, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> well, that's fair, you've had a long trip. But as soon as Mike was in the picture, it was clear that he and Phoebe were meant to be. You're so kind, you're so generous. You're so wonderfully weird. <laughs> Every day with you is an adventure. And I can't believe how lucky I am. And I can't wait to share my life with you forever. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.